2 Kings chapter 18. Now in the third year of Hashia, son of Elah, king of Israel, Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. He was 25 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned 29 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Abai, the daughter of Sechariah. He did that which was right in Yahweh's eyes, according to all that David his father had done. He removed the high places, broke the pillars, and cut down the Asherah. He also broke in pieces the bronze serpent that Moses had made, because in those days the children of Israel burned incense to it, and he called it Nehashtan. He trusted in Yahweh, the God of Israel, so that after him was no one like him among all the kings of Judah, nor among them that were before him. For he joined with Yahweh. He didn't depart from following him, but kept his commandments, which Yahweh commanded Moses. Yahweh was with him. Wherever he went, he prospered. He rebelled against the king of Assyria and didn't serve him. He struck the Philistines to Gaza in its borders, from the tower of the watchmen to the fortified city. In the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hashia, son of Allah, king of Israel, Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria and besieged it. At the end of three years they took it. In the sixth year of Hezekiah, which was the ninth year of Hashia, king of Israel, Samaria was taken. The king of Assyria carried Israel away to Assyria and put them in Hala and on the Haber, the river of Gaza, and in the cities of the Medes, because they didn't obey Yahweh their God's voice, but transgressed his covenant, even all that Moses the servant of Yahweh commanded, and would not hear it or do it. Now in the fourteenth year of King Hezekiah, Sennacherib king of Assyria came up against all the fortified cities of Judah and took them. Hezekiah king of Judah sent to the king of Assyria at Lachish, saying, I have offended you, withdraw from me, that which you put on me I will bear. The king of Assyria appointed to Hezekiah king of Judah three hundred talents of silver and thirty talents of gold. Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in Yahweh's house and in the treasures of the king's house. At that time, Hezekiah cut off the gold from the doors of Yahweh's temple and from the pillars which Hezekiah king of Judah had overlaid, and gave it to the king of Assyria. The king of Assyria sent Tartan, Absaris, and Rabshakeh from Lachish to King Hezekiah with a great army to Jerusalem. They went up and came to Jerusalem. When they had come up, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pool, which is in the highway of the fuller's field. When they had called to the king, Elakim the son of Lekai, who was over the household, and Shebmi the scribe, and Joe the son of Asaph the recorder came out to them. Rabshakeh said to them, Say now to Hezekiah, the great king, the king of Assyria, says, What confidence is this in which you trust? You say, There is counsel and strength for war. Now on whom do you trust that you have rebelled against me? Now, behold, you trust in the staff of this bruise reed, even in Egypt. If a man leans on it, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt to all who trust on him. But if you tell me, we trust in Yahweh our God, isn't that he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah has taken away, and has said to Judah and to Jerusalem, You shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem. Now therefore, please give pledges to my master, the king of Assyria, and I will give you two thousand horses if you are able on your part to set riders on them. How then can you turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servants, and put your trust on Egypt for chariots and for horsemen? Have I now come up without Yahweh against this place to destroy it? Yahweh said to me, Go up against this land and destroy it. Then Elakim the son of Hilkiah, Shebna, and Joe said to Rabshake, Please speak to your servants in the Syrian language, for we understand it. Don't speak with us in the Jews' language, in the hearing of the people who are on the wall. But Rabshakeh said to them, Has my master sent me to your master and to you to speak these words? Hasn't he sent me to the men who sit on the wall to eat their own dam and to drink their own urine with you? Then Rabshakeh stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language and spoke, saying, Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. The king says, Don't let Hezekiah deceive you, for he will not be able to deliver you out of his hand. Don't let Hezekiah make you trust in Yahweh, saying, Yahweh will surely deliver us, and this city shall not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Don't listen to Hezekiah, for the king of Assyria says, Make your peace with me, and come out to me, and every one of you eat from his own vine, and every one from his own fig tree, and every one drink water from his own cistern, until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of grain and new wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of olive trees and of honey, that you may live and not die. Don't listen to Hezekiah when he persuades you, saying, Yahweh will deliver us. Has any of the gods of the nations ever delivered his land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and of Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvim, of Hina and Eba? Have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Who are they among all the gods of the countries that have delivered their country out of my hand? That Yahweh should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? But the people stayed quiet and answered him not a word, for the king's commandment was, Don't answer him. 
And Elakim the son of Hilkiah, who was over the household, came with Shebna the scribe and Joe the son of Asaph the recorder to Hezekiah with their clothes torn, and told him Rabshakeh's words, 2 Kings chapter 19. When King Hezekiah heard it, he tore his clothes, covered himself with sackcloth, and went into Yahweh's house. He sent Elakim, who was over the household, Shebna the scribe, and the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth, to Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos. He said to him, Hezekiah says, Today is a day of trouble, of rebuke, and of rejection, for the children have come to the point of birth, and there is no strength to deliver them. It may be Yahweh your God will hear all the words of Rabshakeh, whom the king of Assyria his master has sent to defy the living God, and will rebuke the words which Yahweh your God has heard. Therefore lift up your prayer for the remnant that is left. So the servants of King Hezekiah came to Isaiah. Isaiah said to them, Tell your master this, Yahweh says, Don't be afraid of the words that you have heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I will put a spirit in him, and he will hear news, and will return to his own land. I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. So Rabshakeh returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna, for he had heard that he had departed from Lachish. When he heard it said of Tarak, a king of Ethiopia, Behold, he has come out to fight against you. He sent messengers again to Hezekiah, saying, Tell Hezekiah, king of Judah, this, Do I let your God in whom you trust deceive you, saying, Jerusalem will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, you have heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands by destroying them utterly. Will you be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered them, which my fathers have destroyed? Gazan, Haran, Rezef, and the children of Eden who were in Telassar? Where is the king of Hamath, the king of Arpad, and the king of the city of Sepharvim, of Hina, and Eva? Hezekiah received the letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. Then Hezekiah went up to Yahweh's house and spread it before Yahweh. Hezekiah prayed before Yahweh and said, Yahweh, the God of Israel, who are enthroned above the cherubim, you are the God, even you alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Incline your ear, Yahweh, and hear. Open your eyes, Yahweh, and see. Hear the words of Sennacherib, which he has sent to defy the living God. Truly, Yahweh, the kings of Assyria have laid waste the nations and their lands, and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they have destroyed them. Now therefore, Yahweh our God, save us, I beg you, out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that you, Yahweh, are God alone. Then Isaiah the son of Amos sent to Hezekiah, saying, Yahweh, the God of Israel, says you have prayed to me against Senesher, king of Assyria, and I have heard you. This is the word that Yahweh has spoken concerning him. The virgin daughter of Zion has despised you and ridiculed you. The daughter of Jerusalem has shaken her head at you. Whom have you defied and blasphemed? Against whom have you exalted your voice and lifted up your eyes on high? Against the Holy One of Israel. By your messengers you have defied the Lord and have said, With the multitude of my chariots I have come up to the height of the mountains, to the innermost parts of Lebanon, and I will cut down its tall cedars and its choice cypress trees, and I will enter into his farthest lodging place, the forest of his fruitful field. I have dug and drummed strange waters, and I will dry up all the rivers of Egypt with the sole of my feet. Haven't you heard how I have done it long ago, and formed it of ancient times? Now I have brought it to pass, that it should be yours to lay waste fortified cities into ruinous heaps. Therefore their inhabitants had little power. They were dismayed and confounded. They were like the grass of the field, and like the green herb, like the grass on the housetops, and like grain blasted before it has grown up. That I know you're sitting down, you're going out, you're coming in, and you're raging against me. Because of your raging against me, and because your arrogance has come up into my ears, therefore I will put my hook in your nose, and my bridle in your lips, and I will turn you back by the way by which you came. This will be the sign to you, this year you will eat that which grows of itself, and in the second year that which springs from that, and in the third year sow and reap, and plant vineyards and eat their fruit. The remnant that has escaped of the house of Judah will again take root downward, and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem a remnant will go out, and out of Mount Zion those who shall escape. Yahweh's seal will perform this. Therefore Yahweh says concerning the king of Assyria, You will not come to this city, nor shoot an arrow there. You will not come before it with shield, nor cast up a mound against it. You will return the same way that he came, and he will not come to this city, says Yahweh. For I will defend this city to save it, for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. That night, Yahweh's angel went out and struck 185,000 in the camp of the Assyrians. When men arose early in the morning, behold, these were all dead bodies. So Senesher of king of Assyria departed, went home, and lived at Nineveh. As he was worshipping in the house of Mizvach his god, a Dramelech and Sherzo struck him with the sword, and they escaped into the land of Ararat. Esar had and his son reigned in his place. 2 Kings chapter 20 In those days Hezekiah was sick and dying. Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, came to him and said to him, Yahweh says, Set your house in order, for you will die, and not life. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed to Yahweh, saying, 
Remember now, Yahweh, I beg you, how I have walked before you in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Before Isaiah had gone out into the middle part of the city, Yahweh's word came to him, saying, Turn back and tell Hezekiah the prince of my people, Yahweh, the God of David your father, says, I have heard your prayer. I have seen your tears. Behold, I will heal you. On the third day, you will go up to Yahweh's house. I will add to your days fifteen years. I will deliver you and this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. I will defend this city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. Isaiah said, Take a cake of figs. They took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. Hezekiah said to Isaiah, What well, will be the sign that Yahweh will heal me, and that I will go up to Yahweh's house the third day? Isaiah said, This will be the sign to you from Yahweh, that Yahweh will do the thing that he has spoken. Should the shadow go forward ten steps, or go back ten steps? Hezekiah answered, It is a light thing for the shadow to go forward ten steps. No, but let the shadow return backward ten steps. Isaiah the prophet cried to Yahweh, and he brought the shadow ten steps backward, by which it had gone down on the sundial of Ahaz. At that time Baradach Baladin, the son of Baladin, king of Babylon, sent letters and a present to Hezekiah, for he had heard that Hezekiah had been sick. Hezekiah listened to them, and showed them all the storehouse of his precious things, the silver, the gold, the spices, and the precious oil, and the house of his armor, and all that was found in his treasures. There was nothing in his house, or in all his dominion, that Hezekiah didn't show them. Then Isaiah the prophet came to King Hezekiah, and said to him, What did these men say? From where did they come to you? Hezekiah said, They have come from a far country, even from Babylon. He said, What have they seen in your house? Hezekiah answered, They have seen all that is in my house. There is nothing among my treasures that I have not shown them. Isaiah said to Hezekiah, Hear Yahweh's word. Behold, the days come that all that is in your house, and that which your fathers have laid up in store to this day, will be carried to Babylon. Nothing will be left, says Yahweh. Then Hezekiah said to Isaiah, Yahweh's word which you have spoken is good. He said moreover, isn't it so, if peace and truth will be in my days. Now the rest of the acts of Hezekiah, and all his might, and how he made the pool, and the conduit, and brought water into the city, aren't they written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? Hezekiah slept with his fathers, and Manasseh his son reigned in his place.